Yeah, uh, one of my questions was just how quickly you changed, as in um, uh, if, when an issue happened or a, a, a catastrophe happened, how quickly the team pulled back together? Was it a close-knit team to uh, go again because you had that mindset of we've got to get a man on the moon? Well, were you talking about the Apollo on fire or Apollo 13 or... Yeah, I mean, any season. of the issues that oh, came along. I'll tell you, on Apollo 13, most of the decisions that were made, that had to be made, were all done within eight hours. We knew we had to go around the moon rather than, because we, if we were going to get back to Earth, uh, and we had another team developing the carbon dioxide removal. It was all happening. In fact, I was giving a talk one time to a technical group, and I got asked that question, how long did it take to make the decision? I wasn't ready for that question, <laughs> of all things. So I pulled together all that, and I, confirmed it with crayons. So it was about, it was less than a day. It was done. Yeah. And was that the way that a lot of decisions were made throughout the whole program? Well, you know, yeah. the... Go ahead, Gary. Go ahead. Go ahead. Your seniority. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you remind me of that. Okay. Anyway, the way. <laughs> he's the kid in the bunch. I'm the youngest. <laughs> uh, you know, the, um, quite often, mission control and the astronauts get a lot of Attention because we were out front. But one of the things that happened in 13 happened uh, after the fires. The whole team kicked into action nationwide. And we had this giant support process where we had contractors that built the hardware, uh, people that wrote the software, which was pretty minimal. And, um, and then we had people that uh, were just research guys that knew what to do. And so we would call on all of them. And the decision-making process, uh, I think, was probably one of the strongest things that came out of the uh, Apollo era. And it developed a way to do that and, and get quick response. And for the 1960s and early 70s, for the technology that we had, pretty amazing that we could communicate as well as we did. By the way, when Bill was on the uh, RKB, the Rose Knot Victor was a tracking ship. And our fastest way of communicating was Tel teletype. teletype. Right, teletype. teletype. And I think we started at 60 words 60. Yeah. per minute. And when we got, a minute. finally we got to 100 words per minute, we thought we'd gone high depth. <laughs> you know, it was really something. So, and we had telephones, of course, that we could talk to people on, on in, the, in the States. But it was... It was really pretty amazing how those decisions got made. And I think that's why we could do it in eight hours on Apollo 13 and have the course of action set. Yeah, to, to build on what Jerry was talking about, for, for that uh, Gemini 8 uh, flight, uh, after they aborted in the sea, uh, you know, nowadays you could send a load and reload the computers immediately. They had to get a cargo plane and fly out of tape. We had to go out in a little dinghy, pick it up, bring it back to the ship loaded in the computer and then started commanding the genus. But back on the Apollo 13 question, you know, everybody, it looked chaotic. But I recall that uh, once we, we got into the limb, Dick Brown was, was one of our ace electrical power guys. He and I sat down and, and I talked to him and we started working on the straw man power up procedure uh, on what we needed to do in case, uh, you know, we started getting back into in the vehicle to come home and we would work that out as a straw man and send it to our fellow engineers in the mission evaluation room where we had our contractors and the engineers and the engineering director look over the decisions we were going to make and then we formed the Tiger team and they they worked on that even more. Oh, refined so the team, yeah, they? yeah, Kranz's yeah. team yeah. refined the power up procedures and uh, that's how quick we worked. We weren't just sitting there twiddling our thumbs. The guys were... You know about the command, sir, command module? Command, sir, command, command module. Right our return vehicle. We knew we had the capability to uh, to charge the battery through the limb CSM connection because we had that on the way to the moon to keep the limb batteries refreshed. I think we had yeah. that hooked up. Yeah, and, and one of the one of the problems on the 13 is that we turned the command module off essentially. That had never been done in space. It had always been started at the Cape and it never powered down until it came home. And, um, and so we had to figure out a way to at the Cape, we had ground support equipment, we called it GSE, that we, we had power and water and air and everything else that we needed to get the thing cranked up. 
But now these guys had to figure out how to power this thing up from a dead start. Frozen. And, and it was colder than heck in there. It was ice on the instrument panel by the time they uh, got in to power it up. And so they had to, the guys on the ground had to figure out how to do that very carefully because they didn't have all the support equipment. They didn't have the power to deal with. So it was, funny. It was and, <laughs> and here's the other funny thing. I thought, every time I think about it, uh, they finally got the procedure of how, to, and it was several pages long, switch A to this position and switch B and blah, blah, blah. We didn't have any uplink capabilities. We couldn't send that up to them, so we had to read it wow. to them. Jack Swigert, who was the command module pilot, was on the receiving end, and he started, we started saying, okay, you take main, main bus B switch C to so-and-so. And he started writing, and about halfway through it, he said, wait a minute, i got to find something else to write on. And uh, so he had to stop and go get a piece of paper out of the checklist or something. And uh, so the, the funny part about it was they got it just right. They didn't make any mistakes. Yeah, and uh, it was pretty amazing. And, uh, but uh, that was really grassroots stuff, really grassroots.